Today we're going to conduct a thermal analysis. I'll start by showing you it with a liquid unknown. First thing I do is take a quarter inch of the unknown liquid into a new test tube. And then I need 24 drops of the unknown on a watch glass. Okay. I'm going to take my test tube clamp, put it on my test tube way up high, take a piece of pH paper, fold it in half with a sharp crease so the ends meet, pads facing out, crease it real well, and wet the pads with distilled water, shake off the excess water, hang it in the top of the test tube so that I can watch it and it's loose so I can grab it when I need it. Okay, the other tools I need are cotton swabs, my thermal explosives tool, I'll need my Erlenmeyer flask, I'll need oxidizer test paper and three normal hydrochloric acid. Start out, I'll adjust the uh, torch so that when I heat up the test tube, I can heat it almost at a right angle. I'm going to lay out about six matches so I can get to them easily during the test, in case I need them. And we'll start out by taking a cotton swab, rolling it in the unknown liquid, and then four inches away from the tip of the inner blue cone, I'm gonna put the swab into the heat and roll it back and forth gently, if you can see that. about four inches away from the actual heat. I'm rolling the swab. I'm looking for energetic bursts of flame. I've had a little patience here. This could take a little while, especially if the unknown has some water in it. The water would have to evaporate off first before the unknown could start to react. All right, in and out of the heat, about four inches away from the tip of that inner blue cone there. It's very tempting to get in closer, but you want to try to stay out and just let the heat, not the flame, impinge the, uh, the cotton swab there. All right, it actually caught on fire. I don't know if you can see that. It's burning with an almost invisible blue flame, but no energetic sideways downwards bursts of flame, no snap crackles and pops. I actually filled up a test tube halfway with water so I could douse this swab once I got it burning. All right, next step, I'm going to take my thermal explosives tool, get it red hot at the tip of the inner blue cone. That's the hottest part of the flame. I get about a quarter inch of the tip of this tool red hot and then quickly plunge it into the unknown on the watch glass. I'm looking for rapid combustion of all of the contents in the watch glass. That didn't occur. All right. Just a little bit of steam. All right, now I take my test tube with my pH paper hanging in it and gently about an inch or so away from the tip of the inner blue cone of the flame there. I'm going to warm up the liquid while I watch the pH paper. When you heat a liquid, you always try to keep the heat above the surface of the liquid. Heat it from the top down. Never get underneath it. It could bump, boil, bump, and shoot liquid out of the test tube. Once I get a few vapors, I allow the pH paper to sit in the vapors for 10 seconds. I'll take the pH paper out, read it, about neutral, about a 6, let's say, and then continue on. Now you go into the hottest part of the flame, and for liquid, once again, I heat the test tube 
from just above the surface of the liquid. I'm going to take a match and keep it over the, the, the headspace vapors that are coming from the test tube and see if I can get them to light. I was able to easily get them to light this time. This is what we call a positive thermal ignition. Once again, keep the flame above the surface of the liquid so you can control the boil. Study the smoke and flame characteristics. Now, if it didn't light the very first time, I would keep trying with my matches that I have out here. I have a positive thermal ignition. I keep going until all reaction has ceased or the unknown has left the test tube. In this case, it's almost gone. And I have to actually melt the glass of the test tube. Tip of the inner blue cone is the hottest part of the flame. It should sound like a blowtorch on the glass at the bottom of the test tube there. And I want to deform the test tube. So I melt it a little bit. Place it into the Erlenmeyer flask. No hurry at this point. I'm going to take a piece of oxidizer test paper. Wet it with one drop of RE2301. And then just dip it into the headspace vapors, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, pull it out. I'm looking for a deep blue-black color. So with my first liquid unknown here, I got positive thermal ignition. I did get a little bit of a black residue on the inside of the test tube there, as you can see that. And those were my results. Negative on the thermal oxidizer, wasn't an explosive. Let's try another one. This time I'll try a solid. For a solid, we'll take a test tube. And four spoonfuls into the bottom of the test tube. And one spoonful on the wash glass. Place my clamp once again very high on the test tube, piece of pH paper, fold it in half with a sharp crease, wet the pads of the pH paper, shake off the excess water, hang it in the test tube. I still have enough matches laid out. With the test tube half filled with water so I can douse the swab. Now this time, when I take my swab, I have to fray it. with my fingernails there, wet it with a drop of the three normal acid, and then roll that in the unknown on the watch glass to try to pick up some of that solid. Once again, four inches away from the flame, slowly rotating it in the heat coming from the torch, about four inches away. And I'm looking for downward, sideways bursts of flame, energetic white flashes. I'm listening for snap, crackles, and pops. I'm looking for energetic behavior indicative of an explosive. A little bit of sparking there. That seems a little energetic. That would be close. To, I would be a little concerned about that in regards to potential for an explosive. You don't want to get too close because the torch will blow the solid off of the swab. And a little bit of sparkling going on. No audible snap crackles or pops. I'm going to keep going until at least the swab is, the cotton is burning. And just starting to see that now. Alright, nothing too energetic. I'll go ahead and douse that. Get my thermal explosives tool red hot again. At the tip of the inner blue cone of the torch flame. And I quickly will plunge that into the unknown. 
on the watch glass. I'm looking for rapid combustion of all of the contents on the watch glass. And a little mushroom cloud coming off of it. Got a bunch of white smoke, but no combustion whatsoever. Okay. Take my test tube now. Gentle warming. And pass it in and out of the heat. I'm looking for, I'm trying to produce a few vapors so that the pH paper can see the vapors, the pH of any gas coming from the vapors of the unknown. You want to watch your pH paper. I got a few vapors coming off the unknown now. If you've melted your unknown, if you liquefy it, and I'm just starting to liquefy here, then you've gone pretty much far enough. Just pull the pH paper out of the uh, heat and let it sit in the vapors for that 10 seconds. I don't know if you can see it, but the pH paper did change. That second square got quite dark and I got a pH of about a 910. About a 910 on there. Okay, I'm going to put the test tube back in the in tip of the interview cone of the flame. Once again, try to ignite the vapors coming off. Oh, look at that. I got auto ignition quickly on the inside of the test tube. I didn't even need a mesh for that to happen. That's indicative of an energetic material there. Something that has a fuel and an oxidizer. All right, I have to... Go ahead and deform my test tube. Looks like it's all gone. I'll deform the test tube, melt it, place it into the Erlenmeyer flask, take a drop of my oxidizer test paper, wet it with one drop of the acid, I'll dip it into the headspace, 1,000, 1,000, and this time it turned a deep blue black color. So the vapors that were left over inside the test tube were a positive oxidizer. I had auto ignition in the bottom of the test tube, positive thermal oxidizer.